Happy New Year, man. Yeah. Hey, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Oh, you guys are here already. What's up? It's me, Shimon from Right Now, and you're watching the review of Nexus 5. <laughs> So this is the Nexus 5 box, this is the 32 GB edition which is black in color. So let's unbox it, here's the box, once you open it, I read it with the device itself, here's the Nexus 5. So let's talk about the basics first, it's a really light phone I must say, you can just throw it off anywhere, do not throw it off. So uh, yeah. If you look at the, its body, on its back it's got an 8 megapixel camera which juts, juts out of the body. So when you keep it on a surface, like if you're keeping it on a surface like this, it really, really wobbles. Never mind. Then uh, it is an LED flash, then you've got a Nexus branding on the back. This being the black edition, you've got the soft touch. Yeah, it's a matte finish with the soft rubber touch feeling. Yeah, which in, which in compared to the uh, white edition, which is glossy on the sides and uh, totally matte on the black, that seems inferior and is much superior. So uh, on the down, on the bottom, you've got the speaker over here and the microphone over here. Yeah, this arrangement seems quite deceptive as people think it's stereophonic speakers, but no, it's not. The speakers over here and the mic over here, and the usual you know, micro USB port. And on the top you've got a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera and the, you know, speaker wheel for your hearing thing. And on this side you've got the power key and the stem trick slot, micro stem that is. And uh, over here is the headphone jack and the secondary mic. And that's what, that's all. That's on the phone is. On the front you've got uh, 4.99 something which is rounded to 5 inches yeah 5 inch display which is full 1080p full HD it's superb I must say yeah just look at the screen so awesome it's so vibrant and bright I must say uh, it's the it's it may not be the best but it's one of the best out there in the market right now and uh, it's got awesome viewing angles you can you can just view the screen, wait, let me just break this, yeah, yeah. If you see, over here, here's the home screen, right? If I tilt the screen like this, you can still see the display. Like that, and like that. Which I must say is pretty impressive. Um, the main factor, the price. Nexus 5 is available in 16GB option and 32GB option. 16GB costs you around... 30,000 approximately and uh, exactly it costs you 29,990 rupees and the 32 GB costs you 32,990 rupees so 30,000 regarding the price regarding the price it is the best phone you can get seriously I mean considering its specifications back to specification it sports a snapdragon 800 processor clocked at 2.23 gigahertz damn fast and it has 2 GB RAM and it has got a very capable Adreno 320 GPU. Bang on. Yeah, so regarding its specs, it's the best you can get in the market right now. If you get any other phone in this price, I mean, with this specification, it will cost you around more than 40,000. Yeah, just like that. Coming back to its UI, it's got a stock Android, Android 4.4 KitKat, and it's amazing, I would say. You know, uh, I wasn't a big fan of, you know, Manila Android, but with KitKat it has changed a lot. I mean, this, I mean, the Nexus 5 is using the Google Home Launcher or something, you know, which includes the transparent button and the Google Now on your left swipe. So, uh, yeah, it is really refreshing and really, really neat. I wouldn't mind using other skins, you know, like Sense. I, I love Sense and TouchWiz you know, just shell out the battery issues and the lagginess, yeah, I mean, normal users wouldn't mind using TouchWiz, yeah, I being a power user, I like to tweak everything, uh, so, it's pretty, it's pretty nice, I mean, if you look at the app drawer, it's no more like black, pitch black, it's like, you know, transparent right now, and you can just scroll it to your apps only, it's not like you'll just scroll and you will go to 
the widgets portion. To add widgets, you really have to manually push, I mean, tap and hold, and you'll get the option to add widgets uh, and all. Okay, so let's have a look what's else there in the box. Hmm. As you open this, you're greeted with the SIM card removal tool and some paperwork. Further down, you get their power socket, I mean, this adapter, which is quite bulky, but fine. At least the phone is slim. Then you get this USB cable, which is relatively long, pretty long, from here till here, here. Yep, pretty long. And then you have this India exclusive earphones, which you won't get in any other country, as far as I know. So these are in-ear earphones, as you can see. And uh, these are not quad beats head for earphones which you get with LG G2 and other LG G series. It's got this click click button over here. And uh, sound quality is fine. Nothing stellar. Okay, moving everything aside, let's have a look at the user interface. As you unlock, you're greeted by the lock screen, which is, you know, pretty familiar, right? If you just swipe from the right, you get the quick access to the camera. As you come to camera, let's talk about the camera interface. So there's something which I don't like about the stock camera interface. First thing up, <laughs> why is it so clutter? I mean, not clutter, so why is it so cumbersome to use it? I mean, I have to hold it down and then move my finger up to see all the options over here. Well, of course, I can tap from here and do the stuff that I want. Like for accessing the front camera, I have to do tap this and tap this. Then it will launch. Okay, it did do it launch. <gasps> that was a glitch. Okay, ah, hello. So, never mind. So, as I said, and one more thing when you just rotate the phone, it hangs. I mean, not hangs, it, it takes time to do that transition thingy, you know, you go like this, click, one second gap, and then just, like in sense, when you just rotate the camera like this, the main viewer point, I mean, what you're watching on the screen doesn't freeze, it's just that the, icon, the, the icons at the bottom, they just rotate according to the screen orientation, but here it lags, not, not lags, but it stutters for a second, I don't know why. Additionally, it's you know, why do I have to use two different modes to record video and uh, to shoot pictures? It should be like easily accessible. Okay, I understand for the photosphere and panorama mode, but why? Why for video and. Oh. I hope it changes in future editions. Plus. Yeah. Plus, in video recording mode, when you're just recording a video. Although the autofocus functionality has improved in Android 4.4.2 update, but it still doesn't have the manual focus thing. Even you just tap on the screen, just takes photos. I don't know why. And still, uh, this stock Android doesn't have that dual capture thing, which is quite popular now. You know, where it can record both, uh, can record videos from the front facing and the back facing camera at the same time. Not only videos can shoot pictures too. Uh, the most fascinating thing about the stock camera app, which I like the most, is the swipe to access the gallery, which is quite intuitive. I mean, yeah, it's natural, eh? you know, just swipe and you get, and you can delete the photos like this too. Such a joy, I must say. Plus, um, plus, uh, when you're going to just press this button, Okay, it's not working right now. Wait, let, let me change to camera mode. Okay. So, if you press this button, it's used for clicking pictures. It's not for zooming. For zooming, you have to use the pinch method. You can zoom up to 3.9x zoom. And, uh, yeah, I got, upon my experience, I've learned that it's zooming capabilities are pretty nice. Even after you have zoomed to the max level, 
it still does a pretty good job yeah it keeps the details intact getting back to the ui section you can you you can just access google now from here this arrow little arrow just hold it swipe up google now yeah plus google now is like more integrated into the os right now like uh yeah you, like you're on the home screen you swipe left you get google now it's part of the Google Home Launcher, which is going to be available in the Play Store really soon. And uh, the most amazing feature is the Google Now feature. Now, the Google Now is right on your home screen. You can just say, OK, Google, and it'll just, you know, launch the search. Uh, no, right from here, here, or here, anywhere. Uh, let me give you an example. OK, Google, what's the weather outside? Oh great! So it's actually that I haven't kept that. I mean, it's kept in silent mode right now. That's why you can hear the results, but it says the results too. And I'm really so very impressed with Google now. Like no other personal assistant, I voice assistant is as good as Google now. Not even Siri. What? Serious I voice man? No mind. So moving on to the app tray. I mean, I'm so outraged that stock Android still doesn't have the ability to create folders in the app tray. Why Google? Why? I mean, I, I can, I, mean, I have comparatively less apps right now in this phone, as I've been using it since one week, and I uh, only have three screens of apps right now. But what if I have seven screens? I mean seriously you want me to just swipe it all and go over there i mean it's not even customizable it's alphabet it's in alphabetical order and the only way you can create folders is by keeping it keeping them on home screen damn it uh one thing that i liked is as i told earlier in the video that it's now transparent you know not totally transparent like you get a blacker shade it's like translucent like it's Nexus 4 and its predecessors. So, going back, we've got notification shade as awesome as ever. Yeah. You can one swipe for notifications and swipe with two fingers for, you know, everything. Uh, quick toggles. So, talking about its media capabilities, it's got a nice speaker, which, I mean, it's okay. It's not the top notch speakers, I mean, after HTC has introduced boom sound, everything else seems bland. But no, we at Brad right now are honest to everything. So all the speakers are fine. It's average. It, it it can be loud. Thankfully, it's on the bottom. It's not like on the back. So when you keep it on the ground, I mean on the flat surface, you can still hear the sound. It's fine, but it's not as good as boom sound. Well, that that's a different matter altogether. So, uh, yeah, one thing that bugs me is in the gallery app, I mean, when you play a video, you cannot, you know, push it to a TV or Xbox or something by DLNA server, like it's available on other Android skins. Plus, the video, you know, the video support out of the box is not as good as on other OEMs. Like, I can play the video. The video playing is awesome. Seriously. I mean, throw any video at it with supports, you know. It can play without lag. Purely without lag. And that's awesome. Seriously, it's really awesome. So that was the footage from our Droidcasting. You can check it out in, a descrip in the description box below. <coughs> so, guys, this was my review of the Nexus 5. Oh! Notification light. Did I tell you it has RGB notification light? No? Never mind, now you know. <laughs> so, as I was saying, this is my review of ne Nexus LG Google Nexus 5. Pretty big name. No wait. <clears throat> so, if you're looking out for an overall phone, considering its price range, it is awesome. Google and LG have done a great job with this phone. I'm really impressed. I want it for myself. <laughs> no mind. So um, yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, and 
I'll be back with a gaming review on this phone. So you can get the link in the description box. And uh, Happy New Year! It's the first review from right now in the year 2040. And we hope it will be a great year for you and us. So I'll meet you later guys. And have a good day. Bye bye.